Hey yo, my Potter Coaster friends, Johnny Five Alive here, and we are here with the summer update video. We're gonna go over all the content in this update video today and show you guys what's new. So stay tuned and let's check it out. All right, guys, we gotta do things uh, section by section and in different maps and scenes. So we're gonna start off looking at the billboards and the new decorations. We're gonna move over to another scene and check out the fireworks. And then we're gonna move over to another scene and check out some of the new coasters. And then we'll go check out the scenarios and stuff last. Uh, starting off things, uh, I feel like we're in need of a hot fix already, guys. It's a little bit uh, messy. I'm, I'm checking out Discord and there's a lot of reports of crashes and, and CPU almost exploding with some of this new content so as you can see here actually I'll switch to desktop mode so you guys can actually see you can see my FPS in the top left corner uh, it's at 60 58 right now and oh uh, 13 24 38 it's freezing I've had it crash three times on me trying to test this stuff guys uh, what's causing it is uh, the sequencer will do it the fireworks will do it and also the TVs will do it so definitely we're in need of a hot fix right now as things are a little unstable and unoptimized it, it's really crazy so <laughs> These new screens are somewhat problematic, I would say. I don't think the, the engine was quite ready for these. Um, but nonetheless, hopefully they get fixed and we'll show you guys how they work as intended. So there's these big projection screens and as you can see, they're playing movies here. And you can, check, you can pick whatever movie you want and then you just hit OK and it switches it. And there you go, it plays. Now there's two different types. There's an illuminated one there's lit and unlit, so I guess one at nighttime lights up and the other one doesn't. So one's supposed to be sort of like a projection screen. I don't know how it works, but apparently there's a lit and unlit version. So these ones are probably better for images, and you can pick whatever image you want. You can pick custom images, and, and there you go. So they're just pictures. And you can put whatever you want on there, advertisements, and you can pick uh, custom images, user images. So it just uses a standard JPEG, which is pretty easy to do. And then you drop it into a, a folder and there you go. So that's pretty neat. And there's different sizes and lit and unlit for all. Uh, there's these big ones, like these are huge. You could definitely make like a drive-in theater or something with that, which is really cool. Then you got the uh, next big ones. And then you got your more standard size for inside your shops and facilities. So when they go in to buy something, you have a little advertisement for your Tiki Cheeky shop or whatever. And some bigger ones again. And then there's TVs, the little tiny, tiny ones. If, you know, even that's small compared to a guest, they're super small. Um, nonetheless, these ones just have edge trims. So they are like little plasma TVs. All of these can be movies or images, so that's pretty cool. Switch this to a movie. There you go. And then, yeah, just more variation, and then they have some square ones. These are the only size for the square ones. And then, yeah, that's the screens and how they work, although the screens do cause some major, major FPS problems. So we're going to turn them off just for now. Uh, just playing these dozen or so screens has completely tanked my CPU and GPU so for now guys I would definitely recommend only using them for images uh, or using them sparingly so if you do like a drive-in theater or something like that one screen might be okay uh, I'm assuming they're gonna be having a hotfix coming in soon hopefully and other than that I would just stick to the images the images seem to run okay now, images, depending on how big they are, I'm sure there's going to be a max and minimum resolution required to get them on. That's something I'm going to have to make in a separate video and test them. But if you put in a big, giant texture on one of these and you have them everywhere, that's definitely going to bog down your machine, especially if it's sourcing them from a custom, a custom folder and it has to load them all up individually. So it'll definitely increase load times and, uh, you know, probably even affect your FPS if you use them quite heavily. 
So for now, definitely use them sparingly. If you're making shops and facilities, I wouldn't put like five different videos playing on a TV inside of all these little shops. And then you start, you know, every one of your shops has a TV and then you put them everywhere. Your, your park will definitely crash at this point. So a little unfortunate there. Nonetheless, uh, they, they are, they work, they, they, they're cool. And I can see a lot of potential uses for this and advertisements used for this. So very cool nonetheless. Uh, moving on to the other scenery objects, we have some balloons. These balloons are colorable. And then they have a curved one as well. And uh, you can put them in, you know, uh, you can make little archways and stuff with them. Uh, they have these little hooks which are used for TV mounts. You're supposed to mount a TV with them, so hanging TVs and stuff. I can see people coming up with tons of uses for these though. And then we have flags. Uh, we also have just colorable flags. These are great for go-karts and stuff as well. So all different, they have curvy ones, straight ones, long ones, and all that. And these ones are colorable where the other ones are not. And then they have some big balloons which have a little animation on them. And I love the texture on them. They look very much like balloons. So good job on the texture. Really great. Now these, I don't think you can color them though. That's okay. And uh, they have scaffold, and I guess the scaffold was intended for like your movie screens, and then you, you put that on there, and then there's a little projector. The projector actually doesn't do anything, but at nighttime it lights up a little bit. So it is just kind of like a, a little box light of some sort. Um, but it actually doesn't project the movie. It's just there for show So I guess you can put it on top of something and then it gives the illusion that this is uh, playing a movie I suppose So that's a thing um, There was another one that I forgot to show I was gonna do a sequence here But it was crashing my PC, so I'm definitely not gonna do that, but I want to show you guys that they added in some like uh, What are these? They're like fireworks, I guess, on spinners. What are they called? Wheel fireworks. So those are kind of neat for triggers. I can see some people doing some crazy stuff with those on coasters. And then these ones here are also just, uh, they're not like your standard fireworks. They're like the Roman candles or whatever. So. I, I could see people doing some awesome stuff with this as well. And in fact, when I do um, like one of those raceways or something like that, and the car takes off like a Sprint 500, you could have this like sparking up a couple seconds before the coaster actually launches. So it looks like it's... And then you could set off a whole bunch of them and make it look like it's trailing fire or sparking. And there's a ton of cool ideas that I could get from all these little things. Uh, confetti bombs, which are cool, or confetti cannons. Those are great. And it's much thicker than the actual confetti that we have in the game right now. So you, even if you were to take one of these and stuff them in a wall or kind of hide them, and for your go-karts, as you're coming across the finish line, it uh, confetti cannons you. Uh, I think it's awesome. So really cool stuff there. Now, they did add in these flags. So there was the... American flag and then you know people were kind of like well what about the other countries and stuff well this is cool because this one is just like uh, the screens and you can put whatever you want sometimes this doesn't work and I don't know why there we go yeah you can put whatever flag you want on there which is neat but it does stretch it so it's actually taking a square texture and stretching it so I don't know how that works Hmm. We'll have to see when we, we start customizing these. But uh, yeah, you can put whatever flag you want on those ones. And then there's also the big flag. So customizable flags, essentially. And there you go. Oh yeah, and a couple last props here. So they got this nice little set. We could put some animatronics on there. Uh, a piano, which is great for doing those little western saloons and stuff. As well as a bar all great stuff for the Western saloons. And then this is a mishmash of all of the assets together. So they just put that, uh, they separated it essentially. I think that's pretty much it. So yeah, we'll move on to the fireworks next. I'm gonna set up a new scene for that. And then um, and then we'll go on to the coasters 
and then finally the scenarios so uh, my thoughts on this stuff right here is it's all very cool and it has potential I love the ideas of screens and what people will do with the screens but it scares the heck out of me uh, based off what you guys saw in my uh, FPS tanking and my game crashing uh, before this recording it made me a little bit nervous that if people start including videos on their uh, video screens on their blueprints inside of every one of their shops um, you know we're gonna have super unstable low FPS parks and it just worries me on the op optimization front so a little bit troublesome there um, but I do love these new things in terms of um, triggered events on coasters the flags are a pretty good addition, especially for the go-karts. These are pretty neat, and this is definitely great for the Western edition. I do feel, personally, that they could have done a little bit more Western props. I love how they're going with this, and it, it you know, they the new scenarios are Western levels. So, in terms of props and decorations, uh, it's lacking a little bit. Uh, you can definitely tell that the focus was the screens and the fireworks and stuff, so... Um, and right now those are a little bit unstable. So I'm it's a little leaving a little bit to be desired right now But let's go look at some wonderful fireworks and see how that goes Our another new feature guys is in the sandbox Whoa. mode Whoa. Now <laughs> Bo was saying in the live stream What is something oh. that we've been waiting for oh. and that's been <laughs> highly requested that's not in the game yet and When she went to sandbox it said custom and I was like no way we're gonna be able to make custom scenarios um, but obviously it wouldn't have been in sandbox it would have probably been in challenge so I was guessing custom scenarios but it's just as awesome as custom scenarios it's custom biomes guys I still would love to go in uh, I want to sculpt the map and then I want to bring it over to challenge mode and right now we can't load a sculpted map into challenge mode and I want to play the simulation aspect of the game and I've been waiting for every update I pray and I pray and I pray just let me bring in a custom map into into uh, challenge mode or, or let me make a scenario where I can basically make a career mode scenario like a chief beef challenge or something like that you know that's what I've been hoping for but this custom biomes is great so here we go I'll show you how it works here so you come in here you name it and then you get to pick your background so this is the background images so in the alpine map they have mountains in the background and the snow map the arctic map they have snow in the background and um you know you guys get it so you pick your background uh well since it's a summer update well, we're gonna pick tropical you get to pick your ambience which is strange so you can have a tropical background with like a grasslands ambience so that's interesting and then here we go so this is, these are the texture palettes now deciduous is like a lot of grass and rocks this is a lot of uh red rock the you know you can see all the texture palettes here for me what's exciting is basically you could swap out what you want so for the arctic one for me personally i would probably s swap out some of these lesser ones and pick something more grassy so you can have some grass areas in your arctic maps and for the tropical i love the sand i love the leaves and stuff so a lot of good ones in here already but there's some repetitive ones might only need one or two types of sand and in some cases i would probably prefer the rock from alpine and you can you can now make those swaps other oh, these rocks are pretty good but for me i would i would take the lesser textures and bring in something new so for this we're gonna we're gonna pick in uh pick some snow pick some snow rock maybe we'll swap these ones out for some red rock just to play with something interesting or grass we have snow we have sand and we have red rock so there you go you get pick your eight textures to go into a map your ambient sound and your background so completely customizable you're gonna have to be very careful because once you go in there's no changing it so and you could also see that the the colors that were painted on the map by default have been loaded in so <laughs> you're gonna have like a little bit of a strange mishmash and depending on what you've replaced it's it could look a little bit strange let's let's show you how this works here now they did say they improved some features so you have the paint with the auto paint so there's the you selected which is whatever texture i have selected at the time and when i do my sculpting it's going to use that texture then there's the sampled which is really nice because it's going to take whatever i'm touching so if i touch this sand and i bring it through it's going to sculpt with sand and so, so i can kind of just sample from whatever I'm touching. Now there's the auto paint, which is um, usually the best. But now, what? because we've changed our texture samples, when we pull the ground up, it 
it wants to use this texture sample. So one thing to know and to study in, is what texture samples use what. So when we replace those first uh, initial textures and we pick the brown rock, we were replacing the side of our auto sculpt. And we were replacing, replacing the rock texture with red rock. But it does give this really interesting look to it. So you definitely uh, want to pay attention to the first two textures that you select and make sure that you're happy with those in terms of what you're going to be sculpting with with auto sculpt. Otherwise, you're going to have to go in and repaint everything uh, after. But nonetheless, those are some definitely some new and improved cool features. So now with this map, we can paint with uh, red sand. We can paint the sides with red rock. Uh, we, we still have our tropical sand and we can even do some snow. Excuse me. So that is very cool. So awesome new feature there. Uh, I think it's going to take a little bit of mastering because I come in here and I can already tell that maybe this texture here wasn't the best choice because it's such high detail, small texture, you would use it very sparingly. And it's nice to use it for the tropical map, but it probably gets used the least. Um, I definitely like the this, this this one here for the sides of you know snowy boulders, and then the soft snow. So you get a nice contrast. So you're definitely going to want your your two main contrasting ones, just like this red rock. You're going to want that on the side with this on top. Definitely going to take some playing around with to figure out what exactly is um, the best combinations. Depending on what you're going to need, it's going to, you know, you're going to want uh, to really sample and play with them all and figure out what's going to work for you. I'm kind of excited to have like a little bit of grass in the snowy maps or a little bit of snow in, you know, other maps. So there's been many times where we see people using the fake snow and the snow boulders to try to make these little tiny alpine areas in, in their parks. So I definitely feel like the snow and the snow and ice are going to get a lot, like see a lot of appearances into just sprinkled into the texture packs. Um, mixing all three and having every, a little bit of everything is probably the worst way to go, but I could see a mishmash between like desert and grasslands and then a mixture between snowlands and grasslands or maybe even um desert and snow which would be a really interesting combination you know then you can have your jungles with uh, a little bit of desert as well if you want i would definitely try and stick with two core themes and and then go from there and it'd also be nice to add more sand to your desert maps so that's that's a nice option as well all right so that's another new feature for you guys pretty awesome all right so here we are with the fireworks scene now i do have to say i wish the categorization of the fireworks was a little bit better it's a little bit random at this point and i put them all down in order and it's very random so i do i wish it was categorized or a better way of filtering it i don't know if there is but uh, they do seem very random because the naming convention in the sorting has always been a little bit out of whack. But uh, nonetheless, it, it, here they all are in order. And in order to get us uh, get them to work, we have to sequence, sequence them. So I'm going to hope for the best because the last time I tried this, it crashed. So here's the sequencer, guys. And then uh, what you do is you make a new trigger sequence. And then you add a display group. And you can add in multiple display groups. And then you're going to connect objects to it. Now, the problem with this, I was finding, is if you do it one by one, so you have to click it and then confirm it, and then you got to, you know, you, it takes a little bit more time. And if they're in a big group, I was finding it was lagging out my machine and doing it like this one by one. Um, it gets them in order of which you which which you selected them. It just takes a little bit more time. You, with the other way you do triggers in on coasters, you could just select it, select it, select it, select it. And uh, this one is a little bit more tedious. But there's also the object or the ability to go like this and marquee, and that's kind of how they intended you to do it. The problem with that is it's naming them or it's placing them based off of their name and not the order uh, of which you selected. So now you can see, um, can you see it? See this one's selected right here. 
but they're all in different orders. You kind of see them highlighting, but it's not in order from left to right of the marquee selection tool. So in order for me to, you know, shoot them all off left to right, I definitely do have to go in there and select it, add it, select it, add it, select it, add it, and go through them all one by one. Otherwise, it's just going to name them alphabetically. And um, it, it, it's a l so it's going to take a long time to set up. But if we just marquee them and set them all in, and then we go in and add a, a delay. One, two, three. All right, now we're going to change it to nighttime. We have our delays in. I set them all to a one second delay. The first six or so we added manually should go off in order. And then from there, it's going to be a little bit more random. So let's uh, play the sequence. There it goes. Beautiful. Look at that. That is gorgeous. Now you can see that they all have different effects and styles to them. And that's why I wish they were a little bit organized better because we're gonna, it's gonna, <laughs> it's gonna be really hard to learn what each one does. Like this chrysanthemum, chrysanthemum, large firework, um, you know, Okay, we could see it shooting off there. We could test it. But what's the difference between that and the Comet Firework? Okay, that one is a, a Sizzler. Um, that one's... Okay. Yeah, it's, they're, they're all different. They all do different things. It's going to be really hard to learn what is what and recognize them. Because in the icons, they all look very similar. Because... Uh, these two look the exact same, but they are completely different in terms of their functionality. Look at that. So, um, it's a little overwhelming, to be honest, in terms of, like, memorizing them and figuring out which ones to, you want to use. Um, it's, it's going to take hours and hours and hours. Like, that's, a, okay, that's a flare. That's pretty standard. But, yeah, learning what they are and what they're, you know when to trigger them and all that stuff, it's going to be quite difficult. And that's my only worry with this. I, I feel like if I were to set up a, a fireworks display, I'd be quite overwhelmed. But you can see here that I just winged it and put them all in an order or in a row. And they still look good. Now all I have to do is just put a whole bunch down, select them all, and then put some delays in there. And, you know, if you just grab a bunch of fireworks and put a bunch of random, um, you know, durations in there and, you know, uh, space a f few of their trigger times in be between the delays. And you just go for it and it it'll turn out looking quite awesome. So nothing wrong with that. So if you just want a random fire display, it fireworks display, it's not going to be too hard. So we have some other ones over here that we're going to play with. So we're going to connect these guys. We're just going to do it like that, and then we'll do a one second delay on all of these, and then we play it. It's pretty simple. Okay. So it's a little bit overwhelming, but it's not that hard to set up. So we're going to try and do a crazy one right here, guys. Um, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna do exactly what I was saying about it. We're just gonna put a whole bunch down randomly and just go for it. All right, so you can only add a max limit of a hundred in one group. You can see that's the display group, but you can add another display group and put another hundred in. So it's technically unlimited in groups of 100. So I've got them in here. Let's play the sequence and sit back and watch the fireworks. It's all a bunch of random <laughs> numbers. And oh my goodness. It's all going to go off in a 10 seconds. All 100 of them. There you go. Not too hard. So uh, I didn't have any crashes and the fireworks seem to be going good. Um, 
this time around. So maybe I had bad luck the first time. I did crash my game setting up a sequence event the first time. And I haven't seen any FPS hits so far. So the fireworks seem to be okay. All right, let's go check out some coasters. All right, guys, I completely forgot to go over this. So I'm clipping it in before the coasters and rides. Um, so we we have new scenario missions. So Miss Ellie's Roundup. Whole new um, scenario section. So the mascots area for this one is Miss Ellie. Uh, so it's going to be, I guess, Western themed. So some of you guys may know how I feel about the scenarios. In my opinion, they, they could use a little bit more work. That they I definitely would like to see more terrain involved in the scenarios. And for me personally, I would just love it if we could create custom scenarios because that would be a whole untapped market for the Steam Workshop. So we're going to check them out nonetheless. So Miss Ellie's Diner is the first one. Miss Ellie's Diner has some great facilities, including big wooden coaster for a spot of excitement, but its remote location means it does not see many visitors and its potential isn't being reached. Realize, can you build up the location and draw in more crowds? All right, so here we are. Oh, look at this. Diner and restaurant, Miss Ellie's. Oh, that's cool. Oh, I love this building. That's a great little blueprint. Oh, Gulpy fuel station, little gas station. That is brilliant. What a great idea. It's like a mini park spotlight, guys. I'm in love with this. <laughs> Look at this. Oh, a little drive-in. Oh, these are great little car blueprints. I touch the screen, my FPS drops to 30. <laughs> the screens are trouble, guys. Um, they are trouble. Look at this coaster. It's a great wooden coaster. Yeah, I'm getting some hitching. Those uh, screens are terrifying. So we have a little gully over here. Cool bridge. Now, they added in a new tarmac. Are these base? Oh, they are basic shapes. Okay. So this is the new path. I forgot to actually mention that at some point in this video. They added new paths in. Essentially, they took the coaster... Um, they took the... The texture from the go-karts, the tarmac texture, and place it onto paths. So we have this new pathing option, and then he, they've added basic shapes in to make it look like a road. Really happy about the tarmac. I I didn't I wasn't a fan of the shiny path with the glossy trim. Uh, at daytime, it gets really bright, as you can see here. The sun just beams off of it. So. Now that they have the tarmac, I'm happy about that because um, I, I, I would make use of it the most. So yeah, this is kind of what I was saying about the scenario maps, guys. They're 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 just flat, and um, the only terrain work done on this is this gully here. And my favorite scenario in the whole game was Good Gully Miss Molly because they had so much elevation and crazy stuff going on. The gully was much deeper than this and you could literally build on the sides of the gully. And uh, it got me really excited. When I see uh, maps that are flat and you just kind of put stuff down and expand, it doesn't really get me excited or thinking about like, uh, I gotta take a monorail up this mountain somehow and get it up to this little spot up here and then, you know, bring it back down over here and we're gonna have a spot, you know, it, it it's kind of just place and go, place and go. And that, you know, I guess you could do your own terrain work on this. Yeah, you can. Um, but I, I'd rather open up a scenario and go, hmm, how am I gonna tackle this problem? How am I going to build around this mountain? How am I going to build around this river? Now, they have done some good scenarios in the past where you had to face these problems. And that's, for me, the fun is uh, trying to decide what you're going to do with this. So, um, this, what they start you off here is really cool, though. And I could see, you know, um, continuing this idea of being pretty fun. So, a uh, very great little set that they have going on here. Now, let's see the challenges. 700 guests, okay, park uh, ride rating 450, um, scenery rating 1200 guests, it's pretty easy stuff, pay off all loans, I'm not too inspired to uh, try this one out, but I love what they've done with it, it looks beautiful, 
and the little drive-in idea is great. All right, so the next one is Gold Miner Tower. Some poor fella brought this mine from a prospector and took some big loans to pay for it. Uh, turns out it was a scam. The varmint had salted the mine. Now he's trying to turn it into a tourist attraction with some fireworks he has given the old west style streets, but it's not doing as well as we hoped and it needs your help. All right, here we are. Now, I did watch the live stream, and what they said about this one, it was a community collab project. Uh, Silverette, Rudy, Kim Attacks, uh, a few others uh, had built blueprints to help out with this one. And then the devs went and put the blueprints in. So I believe everything that we see here, all these buildings are made from people from the community, which is pretty cool. I love that idea. And then... They put it all into this part for you to finish off. Now, already, I'm a little bit more impressed by this one because it does have some terrain. And I was I was saying in the last one that I want terrain that challenges you and makes you think about stuff. Like, I would, wouldn't would mind attempting to try and build a little bit of a park on top of this or down here. And then how do they traverse from here to here? You have to think about your path options and... You know, how do you get a monorail up here? And, um, you, you know, you, these mountains, you can have coasters going in and out. Um, when you get are given terrain like this, it gets you thinking creatively. Uh, you, you know, do you have a park going through here? Do you have rides? Or do you just have coasters running through here or monorails? Um, you know, there's a lot more fun stuff you can do with this. And then there's some flatter areas where you can place uh, little open opening areas of parks. And then, you know, from there, when you make a coaster on the side here, you now that coaster, when it goes up its lift, uh, it can explore through these little areas and come bursting out the backs and then come around here and back in the front and pop out here and come down these crevices and travel around the sides and loop back in through this little hole here and uh, back around. I, I really like that. This is, I want to see more scenarios like this beautiful fireworks show here let's see what's happening here oh look at that wow beautiful did i miss something how does that re-trigger is it uh triggered off the coaster that is amazing this blueprint is magnificent Wow. So I'm assuming at some point this coaster hits a trigger and that's what starts the fire show. Curious. It's not happening again. So the backs are all hollowed out. It's kind of like a set. Which is kind of neat. Now I mentioned I was getting some crashes with the sequencer and hitching with the screens. And there was, as I've been recording this and looking around this park a little bit, I've been noticing something strange happening with the, it like the screen catches. It like kind of uh, trips out. I don't know how to s explain it. It just, it hitches. Um, and I am feeling it in this park right now. I'm getting 45 FPS. I guess I'm going fast forward. But there's some times I've been watching my FPS dip. And it might be because there's a sequencer running in here somewhere, I think. Uh, so I'm a little, little bit worried about how all this stuff works behind the scenes. And if it's going to give us problems when we start doing these mega parks. But uh, I was waiting for that fire display to go off again. And it's not going to happen, I don't think. Maybe it's a, a one-time thing when you open up the park. Which is kind of strange to me. Let's see if we can find it. Oh well. This scenario looks pretty good. Let, let's uh, see the, the things here. So you have to build coasters. Exciting coasters. So a couple there. And then build some more coasters. And build some more coasters. And 1200 guests. So at the end you have to build six coasters. Ah. See this, this scenario has me a little bit more excited. I like it. 
That's a good one. I guess we're not going to see that fire display go off again. I was waiting for it. That's okay. Next one. The last one is the Starship Hangar. They filmed some pretty famous movies out here in the desert. Kind of looks like Mars, don't it? This place isn't much in demand anymore. It's all CGI these days, but the company doesn't want to let it go. They want you to turn it into a theme park instead. Oh, it's like sci-fi western. Interesting. All right, so here we are. Let's, uh... Oh! That's the park entrance. Huh. Big old hangar. That's beautifully designed. I love these little doors. Open, closing. A ship flying out. Wow, look at those ships. Great design. So another one back here. Oh, that is awesome. I <laughs> love the look of that. Mm-mm-mm. The hangar bay. Turn it to daytime. Hmm. Guess you could put a couple of rides in here or something. Or a coaster station. Same feeling I'm getting from the first map. It's pretty flat. It's a drawing here. Interesting. It's pretty flat. Um, there's some terrain here, I guess, that you can build around. Or wait, no, that's the that's outside of the map. So, oh, you can't even build in the hangar. It's outside the map. You can use the edge of it as a coaster station. So you can have a coaster rolling out. So, um, yeah, you have a little bit of stuff that you can build around, have some bridges and build some neat things around this area. But other than that, it's a big flat park. Um, kind of wish there was a little bit more to it personally. Let's see the objectives. Uh, build some rides, get some park value, uh, make some fireworks, build some more rides, and get a park value of 100,000. Uh, make a firework display that holds 250 guests attraction for two, 60 seconds. So I guess the idea is to build a bunch of rides here in a firework display. Um, okay. It's a great um, scenario to get you practicing the fireworks, so it does serve a purpose. Cool. So that's all the scenarios, guys. We're going to be moving on to the rides and coasters next. All right, so moving on to the coasters, we have uh, five new coasters. So the first one is the Bolt. It's essentially like the boomerang that we've seen already in the last update. So it, it's a reverse lift. It's the same style lift at the same steepness and then you can go ahead and make a boomerang from that and now it's got the it's pretty much like the american arrow traditional train but also has a new lift system they've changed the mechanics of that just a little bit so it's 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 a new stylized version of the previous boomerang so that's pretty cool. Now, one thing I'm noticing, guys, I don't know if this was a new feature or if they had this before, but you could also revert. You could pull it forward up the hill. You could do the lift forward and then drop the boomerang backwards. So when it comes back, it's actually going forward. So that's an interesting thing that I didn't realize. I, f I feel like I tried doing that before and it would only let me do them backwards. So this coaster here is it's technically like the um, traditional uh, corkscrew coaster but it has a whole new train so it's a very new style of train very sleek looking um, but essentially this this coaster performs much like the america uh, american arrow so if you guys a good example of this one is this guy the american arrow the third coaster, this one's pretty exciting, guys. It's the Gnarler. It's a wooden coaster, but this one, you can actually paint the track. So, let's try this out. And it has a new train, of course. Very cool design on it. Track color. Look at that. Beautiful. I wonder if we can paint individual pieces. 
Ah, you can. That's pretty cool. So if we go back to the wooden monster, do we now have the ability to paint it, I wonder? Track color. Look at that. So we can. Uh, I don't think this was a thing before. This feels new. So I like this the fact that they added in a new feature and a new train, a new wooden coaster, but they've also updated features to the existing wooden coaster because I do not think you were able to paint the monster before. So now you get your choice between what car you want for your wooden coaster. I prefer this one a little bit better to be honest because the seats are lower than the monster which is going to make for riding the back of the coaster a little bit more awesome. So that's pretty good. I like it. Now the power up. This this feels like a whole new coaster. There's a whole new design going for this one. Uh, it goes straight up and is that uh, the lift ends upside down and then from there uh, <laughs> Yeah, it basically loops back in and around. Now, it's kind of like a boomerang in the sense that the coaster will pass through the station. So, for for these coasters, you're not going to want to build them that big. Because you're only going to be able to have one train running on it at all times. Because if this one passes through and another one's coming through, they're going to crash as it passes back and forth through the station. So, one thing that they mentioned is you're going to be able to set... How many times it passes through the station? Stop stop station on pass two. So this is definitely the newest, most unique coaster as it pulls you up and does this crazy lift. And then it, you know, you're gonna be able to do some pretty awesome track designs. Yeah, look at some of these pieces. That is nuts. So these ones have different track designs for the twists. Those are definitely new track design pieces. Interesting. And then once it comes down, the train comes down, it passes through the station, and you could set that pass as many times as you want. So, in some cases, you can make it make it like a loop, kind of like that flat ride. And it's a quick and easy coaster to make some money on. Very interesting indeed. I like it. And then the last one is, uh, since they went back and they created a different car for this boomerang, um, they did the same for the inverted boomerang and the it's just a, a dual inverted seat or the other one the giant inverted boomerang was four seats this one's two um, I do think the, the supports on this one are different so let's try and edit them alright this is really interesting indeed this new coaster is a launch Standard track dual direction motor. So you actually set the launch speed. Let's test it. So it's much different than this um, Inverted giant boomerang Look at that And I'm gonna assume you allowed to pass set the pass station. Yes, you can That is very cool much different indeed This one feels very much like the other one that we've seen though. So, I'm actually quite surprised by these new coasters. There's a lot of new features here that I did not expect. This one being launched, uh, really like this new lift style on this one, and it passes back and forth. So, that's an interesting new coaster. Um, love the new design of the train on this wooden coaster. Um, and then, you know, these two are probably the least exciting for me. The uh, American Aero Traditional Corkscrew, I did not use that much, and this is pretty much the same with a different train, I would I would think, unless there's something I'm missing on it. And then this is the same as the other boomerang. But in my opinion, I, I much preferred the in inverted giant boomerang because I like the lift going straight up, whereas these lifts, um, they take a lot longer to get the coaster up they're a little bit slower and that means the capacity is much lower and they're going to make less money so i absolutely love the new wooden coaster and these two so that's really cool i'm pretty excited about those so there's the five new coasters everybody now 
for the new coasters, they said that they were adding in some blueprints for these, and I went into recent, but I don't see any. Because I, I remember these were all existing coasters. So unless I'm missing something. All right, so I, I don't know. I don't think there is any new blueprints, but they said there was going to be, and I spent a while looking through here, and I must, I must be blind because I'm not seeing it, but it's really hard to filter these, especially when you have um, so much downloaded coasters so it's all right so i never got to check out the new pathos i know they did this as a, a free little mini update a while back and i did not show it in a video but there it is so while it's not part of the summer update it, it did come out just a couple weeks ago so if anyone hasn't wasn't aware of it there it is it looks like a crazy flat ride absolutely love that and then there's three new flat rides. So one's the observation tower. And I absolutely love the design of this. Oh, I think they added a new song in for this as well. Yeah, I'm a big fan of this one. Loved putting my observation towers into Roller Coaster Tycoon games. So it's good to finally have this in. I love it. So the next new flat ride is the Iron Claw. It's kind of like this, it's like a, a swinging pirate ship, but it also spins. That is awesome. I think it goes right upside down. Nope. I thought it would have. Awesome. And then the next one is this guy. It is like a spinning, or it's it's like this the pirate ship, but this one actually goes right upside down. Takes a while to get going, this one. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> I love it. Oh. So now you have your pirate ship, you have your spaceship that goes completely upside down, and then you have one that's like the pirate ship, but also spins. So something for everybody. I like it. It's great. My favorites, my personal favorites, the Observation Tower. Um, for me, uh, this fits a lot of people on it. So I guess I was going to say this one takes a while to get going. But since it has such a high capacity, um, it's still going to make good money. So maybe I do like, this is my second favorite. It fits a lot of people. I can't wait to see that thing fully loaded. Oh, and I almost forgot. You can now add sequences. Or what is it? Uh, you can add triggers to rides. All right. So, guys, I figured this out. So, check this out. If you go and hit select ride and all sequence parts, including all sequencers and children, recursively. And then you select some fireworks in the background. That's going to attach it to this ride. And then we can make a trigger sequence. So when it starts to swing, it sets that guy off. And then when it starts to spin, it sets that guy off. And then when it reverses, it sets that guy off. And then, yeah, that's, that's all it takes. So we hit done, we test. Let's set this to night. So here it goes. At each one of its triggers, it's gonna do something different. There you go, one firework went off, it's gonna spin, and it's gonna set off this one, boom, there it goes. And then when it starts to reverse spin, when it changes its direction, this one's gonna go off. Okay, now it's gonna do it, right here, there you go. That is pretty awesome. <laughs> so the trick to it is, guys, select the ride and all sequence parts, this little button here, and it allows you to select whatever you want to be triggered off of that. And so I'm assuming you can attach anything to the sequencer. So it could be water effects, it could be whatever you want. 
which is pretty awesome. So now you can set some triggered events and you don't have to do that little, uh, that little gimmick or hack where you have the card just going around underground to set things off. Um, which is pretty cool. Huh. I love it. So that's an awesome new feature. So with the sequencer, I'm interested to see what people do with that. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming you can make a trigger on a coaster, hit a sequencer, and then that sequencer starts doing things as well. So now you can kind of like consolidate your triggers into sequencers and then have the sequencers triggered once um, you hit a certain point on a coaster. So that might be interesting because what if you do a sequencer with a bunch of stuff, you save that as a blueprint, then you put that down and then you get, you just keep putting that blueprint down and on a coaster and then maybe that way we'll we'll be able to copy paste triggers in some senses by uh, triggering them through sequenced groups blueprints so i'm curious to try that and uh, you know through this i'm probably gonna have to play around with some of this new content and maybe make an update uh but we're gonna have to play around with some fireworks and you know uh i might have to play around with the tvs and stuff but i don't really see the point in doing a tutorial to set up the videos on the tvs right now because they do seem to be um, causing some frame rate issues. Nonetheless, pretty great summer update. For me, my favorite thing is, well, I love the observation tower. I can't take away from that. I love it. Um, I do like being able to put custom images on billboards, so that's a great addition. The fireworks are amazing. So, but I think for me, one of my favorite features is the colorable wooden coasters. I love me a wooden coaster, and that's a that's a nice feature right there. So, lots of really good stuff. Oh, the the the, the customizable biomes has definitely got to be my favorite. Being able to put some snow in a regular map like that is absolutely great. So, I still have my fingers crossed for custom scenarios. Maybe the next one, guys. I keep saying it in every update video. Please, next one custom scenarios <laughs> so nonetheless i thought the update was great so there you go everybody uh, quite a bunch of good content for you guys to play around with there once i get playing around with some of this stuff maybe i will make some more videos on the new content so stay tuned guys for future videos all right that's gonna do it for this video guys thank you guys so much for watching i hope you enjoyed i hope you have fun with the summer update i hope you all have a wonderful day so i'll see you guys in the next video bye now